Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first ever guest on the Gadget Show podcast. Ooh. It's the world's only toyologist, Pete Jenkinson. <laughs> Thank you very much. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm doing really well. It's like two, de two decades past. How, how did it go? And nobody looks different. In fact, one of you looks younger. We'll see. I'll decide who that is. But I'll tell you um, later. I wish it was me. I look like a sock puppet of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I look like someone put that in a sock That's really and put some white glasses image. on it. <laughs> <laughs> shoved it. Shoved it full of fabric and... Bashed it a bit. Now, oh, thank you. Um, Pete, you've brought the contents of one of your toy chests along with you. Yes, I have. So I've been really keen. I've been tracking trends, as you would expect me to do. And the last couple of years, we've definitely seen a massive shift towards the kid -out market. Kid now, the true definition of kid -out market is kids age 12 plus that are buying toys but it's really 18 plus yeah. that are buying toys for themselves or for other adults. And that market now accounts for 30% of the three and a half billion UK toy market. Three so a billion quid. Yeah, people are jumping on it well, because massively. We, because we need some more fun. Because we, we need, because we need fun, we need net retro, we need nostalgia. We want our kids to know what a great time we used to have when yeah. we were living more dangerously. Yeah, weren't uh, we, though? And, yeah, Toys were, were we? lethal just... in our day. Oh, yeah, remember them clacker things? Remember the clackers? Cla there, were, there, there were the clackers. That's just the beginning, I mean... <laughs> Did you I was play with the... arcade machines and stuff. Do you remember the clacker things? Hey, do you remember them clacker things, mate? Are you bringing your clackers round, Susie, tonight? I used to dream of Susie bringing her clackers round. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I we used to think, oh, them, Susie... I wish Susie would get her clackers <laughs> out. Just once. I've got my eye on that, um, what is it, 308 GTB? Uh, what, straight out of Magnum PI, yeah. circa 1982. Yeah. Uh, with the characters from Playmobil. <gasps> so they've, uh, oh Playmobil have jumped on the kid alt market. So they had the A-Team van, they had Tom the Scooby-Doo Castle. Uh, they've got the uh, Porsche 911. And then just fresh out of nowhere, there's the, there's the Ferrari from Magnum PI. And Look the two figures that. I've got in there, uh, that's, um, that's uh, Mr. Selick and Higgins with his parrot. Oh my so God! Yeah, the, 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 the roof so, shouldn't be so, at such a jaunty angle. I'll just say again, what we're looking at is a Playmobil um, '80s Ferrari. I think it was a 308, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, 308 GTB. And inside the Playmobil version of Tom Selleck um, and his regular assistant Higgins. Higgins. Well, yeah, he looks after Higgins. So okay, but I the Tom Selleck shirt is so memorable. Looking at the Hawaiian also, just, shirt. Just checking, he's got long trousers on, which is weird because he's always got really short. Shorts on. In Insane. Just some Insanely short. Shorts. That might have been part of the licensing agreement. He's like, I don't want to be seen with those budgie smuggler type affairs yeah. on anymore. I need long, long trousers in these. No uh, banana hammock is what he said. That was the actual yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I was quite wording. <laughs> Does this do anything special other than look amazing? It's one of those shelf worthy items. And you're watching some retro episodes on TV with that in front and kind of, you know, passing those. Afternoons away. It's, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to do. It is. I was going to say, people now don't like our, you know, mom and dad's generation would put like ornaments on their shelves. We, yeah. we now put pop culture icons on our shelves, don't we? Like those, yeah. um, what are those pop things called? You know, the, the pop vinyls. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a character for pretty much every character yeah, there is. that yeah. ever lived. And, and so that's that sort of item, isn't it? Yeah. And, and Lego are doing very much the same. I mean, their growing market is 18 plus. It started with the start, the big Star Wars the expensive Star Wars builds, um, and now they've got a 1.2 metre high Eiffel Tower that will cost you 600 quid, or a 900 pound Titanic that comes in three boxes. It's that blinking big. Great. These are all the shelf-worthy um, things that yeah. are, are, are making um, Lego and, uh, and driving things forward and becoming, it's back to the shelf-worthy, their display items. What's this truck? So he's, um, so Optimus Prime, Transformers, they accelerate. They're 40 this year. It's his first cartoon. Transformers is 40. Transformers no is 40, yeah. How? I know, we'll just give that a moment. Sink in. <laughs> sink in. There's a range of um, really high-tech toys by a company, a Korean company called Robosen, um, which are expensive affairs. Like they've got uh, Optimus Prime, which has got 32 servo servos inside it's a wonderful thing but it's a thousand pounds it is i saw it in berlin actually in the summer i went to a, a oh, you show went over e Aoife. nice yeah. Yeah. almost a bit like the consumer electronics show mm. in vegas but in berlin 
and they had the whole dancing troupe. There was, I mean, there was about 30 of these ones, right? So toy robots, robots in well. that instance... So amazing, are, are expensive. They're actual robots now, as yeah. opposed to... Toys, ima- yeah, yeah, toy toys robots have become robot. real robots, and they perform brilliantly. But they are expensive, yeah. and they're firmly aimed at not just parents with a bit of cash, but parents who've got slightly too much cash to spend on toys and some. So, you know, a thousand pounds on an Optimus Prime transforming robot is kind of, is pushing it. You've got it's to be a really hardcore fan. That. However, you can get a transforming Optimus Prime robot in the shape of this little truck. Uh, the, uh, the press of a button does exa- exactly what everybody wants from an Optimus Prime. Oh. Well, as you can probably guess from the sound effects, <laughs> that um, truck just stood up and is now a very convincing. Transformers robot, yeah. and you can drive them and around the table, around and then just simply. Let's put, roll. No, just. Oh no, it's transforming back into a lorry. Um, oh, oh, hang on! Hey, you're quite deft on the old it's controls deft. there. Oh, I panicked. It's actually a beauty, that. Yeah, it's not bad. It doesn't feel uh, too too plasticky. I mean, this is uh, this is a sixty-five pound. Well, toy. I was going to say, interestingly, and if you were to ask any kid what they want out of an Optimus Prime or even that's an adult. It. That's it. Up, down, And strangely, forward, something right. like that seamless transform, transformation... It was seamless, wasn't it? ..would have, in the 80s stroke 90s, would have actually been quite difficult for toy makers to pull off. That's better than it was in the cartoon 40 years ago. Yeah, Absolutely. it is, yeah. Tamagotchi, uh, oh. Furby, believe it or not, they're retro. So Tamagotchi has now become... Um, there's an iteration of it now that is Wi-Fi connected, so you can connect to other people's Tamagotchis. And so your living little digital creature can pieces. populate. Uh, so, and there's a new uh, one that's Tamagotchi-ish-esque. tamagotchi What have we got here? Easy for me to say. Uh, it's called Bitsy, uh, one of the best-selling toys of last year, America and in the UK. So if you pull the tab up on the top of Bitsy, Bitsy is a LED-driven oh, um, animal inside the case you'll see there's a little animal inside there that pops up uh and with the, oh my with god the lights that's so cool so essentially it's... very much like a tamagotchi the more you cor- you interact with it out when oh. out of the box and the more you interact with it the more it will grow so what let me it. just say so that people yeah. listening can envisage this we've, we've got like a tamagotchi well we've got we've got almost like you know when you present a ring to someone in a box so you open the lid and inside is a holographic Tamagotchi, and not just is that one, what you're either. saying? It says here there's 15 no, there's a, pets th- th- in each pod. There is, so as, as wow. you nurture and grow your bitsy pet, you can open and access up to 14 other ones. So you have 15 pets in a box, 15 LED holographic that. pets in a box. So, Pete, why is it still in the box? Are you taking uh, it back? Well, you, uh, <laughs> have you got the receipt? I do have the receipt, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, if you couldn't tug that. Tab too hard, that'd be great. Thanks very much. <laughs> Just as a general rule in life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Can I ask a serious passive. question? Have they AI'd it yet? Is there are there toys that are, De- that are being sold yeah, as, as AI yet. enhanced? Yeah. There is one from um, Mattel called Pictionary, mm. which you draw a figure in the air I love and you're supposed to guess. I love great. It. Yeah. And if, if we played that, yeah. we'd probably fall out. Really? I was so competitive. It's it's a, it's a damn fine <laughs> game. So they've tried to jump. So Mattel have tried to jump. What, you've got it in your hand? Yeah. Why would you play it? He's got it, he's got it in his hand. But this wasn't rehearsed. I just said there's an AI thing in toys and he blooming pulls it out of his sack. It's not yeah, it just happens to be Santa's AI. sack. It's not it's real. A never ending satchel of toys. It's incredible. The, so Pictionary versus AI. So you play it with the, uh, the, the picturing app goes on your phone. You play it no. competitively two to four human players versus AI in its not truest form. Uh, because it wouldn't cost you £24.99. But it's a what damn a, fine game. So you've got idea. basically you are you, you pull the card out as you do with Pictionary, you've all got to draw something. Um, and you also you're drawing on a transparent board which is being read by the AI and your camera on your phone. So the AI gets to have a guess so as cool. well. So you're playing against the AI to see whether it can guess your drawing better than your other players. It's quite good. It's pretty intuitive and it's not very expensive. It's probably the cheapest and most accessible form of AI out there right now. I did so, not. Yeah, toy companies that. are trying. That's, so, that's extraordinary. And it's also really great to hear that toy companies are doing well. Yeah. Because there's nothing better than physically playing with a toy, is there? No. Well, whatever age you are. Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? it? Just takes you back, doesn't it? Well, what can I say? You are the the toyologist. Which one of those buttons does the cheer? I don't know which one it is. It's my button. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Pete Jenkinson, ladies and gentlemen, toyologist. Thank you very much.